Hello and welcome back to the Forgotten City. Oh my goodness. Really? I've hit the wall in front of me. I've hit the one in front of him two times. Ooh. More arrows, great. Cheetah. It's closed. Oh, now we are up here. Oh, what are we doing now, Prince of Persia? Oh, really? You're welcome. Oh. Oh, little that lady. She's sick! My beloved Galatea, my attempts at freeing these souls from their golden prisons have not been going to plan. My first charge was a Greek woman who I called Iodami after the Athenian turned to stone by Medusa. Drilling through the gold that encased her, I was vindicated by the discovery that beneath half an inch of gold, which is so rigid it must be some kind of alloy, was living flesh. Unfortunately, this golden alloy seems to have fused with her skin, so removing it exposed the sinew and muscle beneath and appeared to cause her great pain. At first, I braced myself, expecting that inflicting such pain would break the golden rule, and yet, somehow, it did not. It seems whichever god is responsible for imprisoning these poor souls does not care about their suffering at all. They are Undeterred, I press on, working late into the night, attempting to remove the golden layer that encased her as delicately as I could. Eventually, I was able to kill most of her body, but when I released her from her restraints, her first act was to lunge for my throat, 
clawing at me with all her strength and those sharp metal talons. This was my thanks for trying to save her. Whatever possessed Iodami to attack, she was clearly not a suitable subject for my experiment, and I was forced to lock her inside an isolated wing of the palace and bar the door. As I continued working on others, I could hear her flailing and launching herself at the other side endlessly. Oh no, 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 no. My other experiments bore similar results, and after relocating a few times, most of the palace is now too dangerous to work in. Still, as much as my heart aches to know that you're suffering, I cannot risk attempting to ungild you yet. Not until I have perfected a method that will bring you back to me, whole in both mind and body, and ensuring your humanity is preserved. I promise you this. One day, we will be together. Even if I have to free every last statue in this god's forsaken place. How many of them did you bring in here? You can are you whispering to me through the statue somehow? Uh, why are you helping me? I hate you. With the fool You must be Navia. And you must be the wretched snake who broke into my palace and disturbed my experiments. And worst of all. Look at what you made me do to her. This never would have happened if you just stayed away. You're going to pay for that. Um, this... If you attack me, we'll both end up in a case in gold. Why do you think I care about that? I don't care what happens to me, as long as you get what you deserve. This has nothing to do with me. Yeah, I locked and barred the gate. I left a message warning you all to leave me alone. I just wanted to do my experiments in peace for her. And now look at her. You made me turn the most beautiful woman I've ever seen into this. Look at her. She's in agony. All I wanted was to spend my last moments with her. To see her beautiful face. To hear her speak freely instead of in those cryptic whispers. But as soon as I began my work, she stopped whispering to me, and now I discover she started whispering to you instead. What's so special about you? It's not just this that she's whispering to me. A lot of them do, but it's always the same voice. What do you mean the same voice? It's like someone else is whispering to me through the statues. Hmm. Yes, I remember when they used to whisper to me. They did sound similar. I just thought it was because all voices sound the same when they whisper. But now that I think about it, they were all benevolent and seemed to share a common knowledge. But if these bodies are mere conduits for that one voice, then this body is nobody. And everything I've done here was... was... Wait, I see what you're doing. You're trying to steal her away from me. Were you planning to wait until I'd done all the hard work, then swoop in? Is that it? No, I swear. Maya, you tried to steal her away from me, and now look what you made me do. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't peel you too. I've I ended up here by accident. All I want to do is leave, please. What are you talking about? <laughs> I got trapped in tunnels under the city and I'm um, and came up inside the palace. Wait. So you're saying you weren't coming for us? No. I never had any intention of hurting you. So I did all this. I ruined her. 
for nothing. What have I done? Oh God, I feel sick. I am. I can't bear this. He's gonna kill herself. Like this, and in so much pain. It's the air coming into contact with her flesh. It's agonizing for them. But the only way to fix it will be to break the golden rule and let it run its course. At least that way she'd be golden again and we'd be together. All it would take is one little cut. I can undo all this if you tell me the treatment for rheumatism. It's too late. There's nothing you can do. I have to do this. I'm sorry. I can cover her in gold again. What? How? This golden bow is the weapon that encases people in gold. Really? I, I'm not sure I believe you. But if you can undo this mess, I'll tell you what you need to know. But if you're lying to me, I'll break the golden rule and kill you and everyone else in this city. Understood? All right. You did it. You took away her pain. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you. I swear I will never harm her again. I swear it. I'll stay here to keep her company. But these poor souls, what can be done for them? I've tried everything I can. I fear the only one capable of releasing them properly is whichever god doomed them in the first place. In any case, I must honor our bargain. The treatment for rheumatism is willow bark. I believe there's a pot of it already in the Shrine of Apollo. Now, please leave. The door here leads out onto the palace balcony. You should be able to make your way down from there. Bye. Hope to never Go. see you again. And never mm -hmm. return. <laughs> never. Never ever ever. Those butterflies. Yep, I'm going. You really she really does remind me of piety in Path of Exile. Similar experiments. A slightly better outcome. Hmm. all the same. But now we know how to treat hermetism. We talk to her. We've been through the palace. We have the bow, which we can do, which we can use in the lower cistern. Hmm. If only we can get past this damn gladiator. The bow. Okay. Wait. Slides. I don't know, it's just a way down. Less nope. Say that this is just the way down here, or is it? Oh, I don't think it is. No, let's hide it. I've yes, I did forget that we have the flashlight. And I think that there, there should be another zip line. Do we want to use it? Not really. Oh. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, that's more like it. Oh, this is 
how we can get past him. Hey, you're not thinking about going. I am. Ow, 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 ow. I know about your creature. Don't worry about me. Well, it's your funeral. Yeah, whatever. But I am gonna save. Oh, it's only if it's only one, then we should be fine. Hopefully, it's only one. We still have to go up there. Huh. By the way, do we have enough gold? The coins now to pay off the debts. One debt for sure. I'm trying, please don't resist. You are welcome. This is our way up. But let's look around since we are already here. There's still some time. There is a Latin inscription in the back, which is Sendia Def. No, I won't take the coins, don't worry about that. What oh, I saw some more thing over there. Ooh. Another I, ah. Believe me, I have no idea what those what those achievements are about. That's, that this is just a regular mold. We've been on the other side of this place. An emaciated human like creature sputtered in gold. It appears to have been crushed to death while entering the system from the cave beyond. And I think we've been on the other side of that cave. Okay, so now the only thing we've left is climbing up here. Are you serious? Thank you. Oh. Please don't fall, please don't fall, please, 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 please don't fall. You're very agile climbing all those vines without using your hands. Sentia? No. <laughs> You're the sister, right? No one sent me. Do you know you're here? You have to help me escape before that monster comes back. What is going on here? I'm Centella. Okay, I found a out through the gate of corn, but it's locked. So I told him about it, and instead of helping me escape, he locked me up. He wants to keep us all here forever. Your father. I would turn to gold. He's a monster. You have to let me go so we can kill him and take his key. How hasn't this broken the golden rule? I don't know. He said the gods are on his side because they don't want us to escape either. Who did this to you? Sentius, my adoptive father. Furies help me. 
I'll castrate and crucify him. Where is the way out? Behind me. There's an aqueduct tunnel bringing water from outside the city, so it should lead us outside. The only problem is it's barred by a heavy locked gate, and he has the only key. What will you do if I release you? I'm going to take that key from around his neck. Even if it means cutting his throat to get it. Month. He, she's been in here for a month. At least month. Help me, and we can escape together. What about the others? There won't be enough time. Just you and me. What do you say? What if I round everyone up so they're ready to escape once the golden room is broken? There's no time. Wait, did you hear that? He's here. Quick, you have to let me go. It's now or never. I'm sorry, but if I let you go, everyone else is going to die. What? No. You can't just leave me here. How can you be so heartless? What heartless, just rational. Our escape is over the life of everyone else. I hate you. I spit on you. I hope this drags you to Tartarus. It would have been easier if I knew where he was coming from. Oh, this is the... okay! Really, though, where is he? This is dumb. That isn't magic, I don't know what it is. I'm sure everybody wants to be so eager to talk. Thank you. Uh, to use this way in. Hmm. Yes, we'll talk to him about that. Well, he's still over there, so I don't know what she heard. Citizen, we're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? I'm Enverva and we've had this conversation we before. Have. Yes. Wait, if I understand correctly, someone is about to break the golden rule, forcing me to create oh. a portal in time to bring you here? I, I must have entrusted mean. you with figuring out who the culprit is. Only, I assume we failed. And we can't talk to him to start about that just yet. Is that about right? If so, what happened? I couldn't stop it from being broken. Ah, I don't know what see. it was last time. Look, Are you sure? Unfortunate. It was broken. All that matters something. now is that you make use of what you've learned and gathered and do better next time. Now, I assume you sought me out again for a reason. Um, I would like you to release Dooley. You mean Duilius? Releasing him is out of the question, I'm afraid. That man is a liability we simply cannot afford. Perhaps you're not aware he was caught multiple times, sneaking around in places he should not have been. What exactly did he do? Look, I can see where you're going with this. You think me cruel. I, I don't know where I'm going with this. That is not the case. You may not be aware of this, but... It was not so long ago, during the Republic, the law of the Twelve Tables would have required that he be killed as soon as he was born. 
owing to his deformities. Here we see to it that he has food, water and shelter, and most importantly, he is able to continue living, a privilege that would be taken away from all of us were he to be released and commit the crime of trespass. The man has no self-discipline, poor comprehension of what is going on around him, and is an incorrigible rule breaker. I will not jeopardize the lives of my people so that one man can go free. Now, was there something else? No. Thank you. I'll be waiting here for news. Yes, so we still have to... Oh, we're running out of time. Hey, Virgil. I don't know who did this. Yeah. I know how to do this. Livia. Right. Livia. Priestess. Priestess and Bolivia. Isn't the great temple majestic? I take it you've cleared the way to the baths? Oh, right. Follow me, but don't follow too closely. We can't have people thinking we're bathing together. I think five meters is a fairly good... Right, I still have to talk to that bread lady. Baker! Let's say baker. She went into the darkness. We do now. We just follow her. Oh, yeah, actually, that's a very nice thing you covered it here. Oh, I'm amazed. I, I can't stress enough. I love this following mechanism. This is amazing. <laughs> I can look around freely. Like this, I can <laughs> look backwards. I love it. You're here. You were asking how I knew the young woman you met by the river was wearing a hood. It was you. I looked down at the bottom of the baths. It's a little hard to make out in this light. I don't want to. If only we could see. Oh, oh. what a marvelous lamp. But do you see it? Somebody waking up by a river in a forest. Is that a faint? A hooded figure with a coin. It's just as you described it. Only your pronunciation is a little off. The name you heard wasn't Karen. It was C H A R. -O okay, so it's from. As in, Charon, the ferryman of the dead. Charon, who, in exchange for the right coin, helps the souls of the newly deceased cross the Styx, the river that separates the land of the living from the land of the dead. When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never going to wake up. I checked your pockets for ID, but all I found was some loose change. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead-end job with an endless commute. Sorry if I sounded cagey, it's just that... I don't always get the best reactions when I introduce myself. My name's... Karen. There are a bunch of old stories about the gods punishing people by making them do the same futile task over and over. But, on the bright side, at least you're not stuck in the underworld like they all were. I'm so sorry, my friend. I'm so, so sorry. I take it you know what this means. This place is the Underworld. I'm afraid so. It's all starting to make sense. All these people whose last memory was running from the fires toward the river. It seems none of them escaped with their lives after all. Perhaps we should be grateful they don't remember their final moments. It also tells us that the Golden Rule is the work of Pluto, the god of the underworld. Hey, this. Why his epithet has always been father Wait. of riches. I know it's a lot to take in. Yeah. And you look as if you have questions. So I'll try to answer them if I can. Okay. So we're dead. That was my first thought too. 
In the old stories, the underworld was where the souls of the deceased were taken. But it was also possible for the living to reach it without dying, if they were particularly fearless. So I'm afraid I don't know. What can tell me about Karen? Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting you're not from here. If you were Roman, or even Greek, you would know these stories. Each of them is slightly different, whether the storyteller was Plato, Homer, Virgil, or Ovid. But they always involved the souls of the dead, meeting a grim ferryman named Charon on the bank of a river. It was said that he'd help the new arrival cross, only if they could pay him with a coin, an obol. That's why it was once our custom to bury our loved ones with a coin in their mouths. Charon's obol, we called it. It's way too soon up after the spirit fire. Coin, because we inherited this knowledge from the Greeks. Really, it's way too early after the spirit fire. Why didn't you overcook as Karen immediately? To be fair, the ferryman isn't exactly as the poets described. And he, she, they, they seem to appear to different people in different guises. You say you saw a young woman named Karen with a hood. And I once heard Kabash mention a stranger in a ram headdress named Kerti. And Rufius described meeting a stranger named Kamut Tabal wearing an eagle headdress. But whatever form this stranger took, they were always wearing a hood of some sort, and their name always began with a K sound. I suspect the only way you'll solve this riddle is if your paths cross again. Why are there so few people in the underworld? Good question. Let's see. In the stories, Charon would always require a coin as payment for passage across the river. But that never made any sense to me. What does an ancient immortal being need with coins? In our case, it seems Charon didn't take the coins we had. He or she merely checked we had one in our possession. So, maybe there's something special about the coins each of us had on us. And that might explain why we wound up here, but so many others did not. We're trying to keep this from me? No, she did not, but no. we we're gonna go for that. I mean, I had my suspicions, especially after Livia's ramblings, but I would never have figured it out without your help, I promise you. That's all the questions I have. We know where we are. We have to figure out what to do about it. If we don't want to be cast into gold for eternity. You know, we are literally... much to go on. Except the old surrounded right. I remember four in particular about heroes in the underworld. Hercules, the demigod and son of Jupiter. Orpheus, a Thracian poet. Sisyphus, a king of Ephyra. And Aeneas, a Trojan hero. Hercules was able to leave the underworld because he cowed its god with his strength. Sisyphus and Orpheus both relied on their wits instead. They persuaded the goddess of the underworld, Proserpina, to help them escape. And finally, Aeneas was able to escape with the help of a spirit guide, who led him through a secret gate. So it seems you have two options. To confront the god of the underworld head on, or find a way to escape with the help of Proserpina or some other guide. We just skip the way we came in. It's a reasonable question, but the problem is, this place is fairly well designed to keep us here. There's no way to climb up the shaft. And even if you could build a ladder big enough, just trying it would break the golden rule. We know that, thanks to the writings left behind by those who've tried. I've noticed you seem uncomfortable calling the god of the underworld by his name. Why is that? All Romans try to avoid saying it. And the reason is quite simple. He might hear us. You may refer to him as Pluto, if you wish, but you'll only be calling attention to yourself. Do so at your own peril. Tell me more about confronting Pluto head on. Shh! Is everyone so blunt where you're from? Oh. That option would be the boldest, but also the only way to learn the truth about the Golden Rule, and maybe even put an end to it. As I said, Hercules managed to overpower the god of the underworld, but he was a demigod. Forgive my candor, but you are no Hercules. I could just couldn't manipulate time or turn organic matter into gold. I have a few tricks up my sleeve. I admit, 
You do hmm. seem different to anyone I've ever met. And even that lamp of yours looks like something Prometheus might have stolen from the gods. So, if you want to confront him, I'll help you as much as I can. Who knows? Perhaps your name will be uttered in the same sentence as Hercules one day. But first, you'd need an audience with you-know-who, and for that, you'll need to enter the great temple overlooking the city. The problem is, the door has been sealed shut for as long as I've lived here, and there doesn't even seem to be a keyhole. I suspect the answer lies in the desecrated obelisk in front of it. I'm not sure if you noticed, but there are four plaques missing from its base. It looks as though somebody, or a series of somebodies, forcibly removed them, and in doing so, dishonored and angered our divine keeper. If you could recover and replace all four of those missing plaques, I imagine he might be willing to receive an audience again. What can you tell me about the obelisk? It's the towering stone monument with four sides and a pyramid-shaped head that stands before the great temple, a dedication to the god of this place. You'll find them all over Rome, but of course they were looted from Egypt many years ago. And of it's course, as an archaeologist, I should have known that! It's a mystery. However, this one is unusual in that each of the four sides is decorated in a different style. Roman, Greek, Egyptian, and another I don't recognize. Probably Celtic then. That means you'll need to recover four different plaques. Roman, Greek, Egyptian, and a fourth, a mystery plaque. Okay, uh, and you know what? I'm gonna tell you know. Okay, let's finish. Question. Let's finish to talking that, to her. We first need to ask who would have defaced the obelisk in the first place. Malelus. would have had the god's name engraved into it. So it may be that whoever desecrated it wanted that name to be forgotten. And there's only one group of people I know of who might want to do that. Olivia? Cult in Rome that mm. often argued there is only one true god. Christians. Theirs, of course. They've been known to start fires, as well as deface religious monuments whose existence challenged their beliefs. If I were you, I'd go looking for them. Of course, they've all been in hiding since the fire last year, so finding them won't be easy. But I did hear a rumor they have a secret shrine somewhere in the city. Perhaps, if you could find that, you might be able to recover the Roman plaque. Greek plaque? No. Plaque. But perhaps you should begin your search with the local Greek fellow, Georgius. His store is in the forum. Oh, we have to talk with him anyway. Egyptian one? Perhaps Kabash, our Egyptian resident, will be able to tell us. Unfortunately, he disappeared weeks ago. But I did hear Aurelia is peddling rumors about him at the tavern. So, perhaps you could talk to her. Or just take a look in his room. And the mystery one? I'm afraid you're on your own with that one. But perhaps... Finding the other three will illuminate the way. Okay, what was that about Aurelia? Tell me more about escaping with the help of Proserpina, our guide. As I mentioned, both Orpheus and Sisyphus were said to have persuaded Proserpina to help them escape, and Aeneas was guided to the exit. The problem is, those are the stories of a poet, a self-aggrandizing king, and a brawler about their own heroic deeds, so they should be taken with a grain of salt. First, Proserpina. What we do know about her is, well, it's a grim tale. It's said the god of the underworld abducted and dragged her here against her will, forcing her into marriage. So she might be willing to work against him to help us. If the stories are true, then I suppose so. The problem is, how do we communicate with her without being noticed by her captor? Leaving that aside for a moment, there is also the possibility of a spirit guide. I don't suppose you've come across one of those in your travels? I hear the famous statues whispering to me every now and then. Truly? And you're only bringing this up now? Then again, I suppose you were worried I'd think you were as mad as Navia. Can you tell me more? Is it the same voice? What kinds of thing does it say? 
It's always the same voice and she's helpful, if a little cryptic. Fascinating. Perhaps she's a benevolent spirit. Or perhaps... Hmm. Perhaps you're hearing the voice of Proserpina herself. If she has indeed been abducted, it would make sense for her to speak in cryptic whispers to avoid detection. Tell me, has she told you anything that might lead you to the way out? I've already found a way to escape. Truly? Then why are you still here? Because that path will result in the deaths of nearly everyone here and I don't want that. Ah, oh, I see. Then it seems you have made a great sacrifice for all of us, friend. Yep. I admire your compassion. Truly. Thank you. You're welcome. But unfortunately, I'm afraid your only other option will be to confront you know who. Alright, I'm ready to get started. Alright. I would suggest not discussing this with anyone. The best we can do for them is to let them remain oblivious for as long as possible. As for Livia, it seems she's been shouldering the weight of this terrible secret all this time. Perhaps it would comfort her to know she's not alone. I'll start this. In any case, struggle with Livia. Of the essence, so you'd best begin. May Fortuna guide you. Although you may not need her with Proserpina on your side. Okay. Oh, that was a lot. But I wanted to see what was that. Nope. Um. No. Okay, there was something with. Oh, fail apparently. I don't know which. Maybe it is that we can't talk to her right now. Yeah, because there's nothing in here that we failed. Oh well. So let's not worry about that now. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!